WBOR Black Box Online Radio coming to you from West Virginia. Black Box Ned 88 on Instagram for the bonus podcast. And welcome to our discussion series on the Santa Rosa Hitchhiker Slanks. This is not the first one that we've done. The first episode that we did on the Hitchhiker Slayings from Santa Rosa, California in the 1970s will be available in the description box here if you would like to hear something a little bit more comprehensive, more of an introductory piece, because today we're going to be talking about a very specific murder, and that is the murder of Kim Allen, also known as Kim Wendy Allen. You'll see her name written in a variety of different ways throughout the news articles, K. Wendy Allen, Kimmy Allen. There are a few uh, different variants of the spelling. But you'll see Kim Allen here in the picture. And right now I would like to go over to an article that was published around the time of her death. I got it off of the Santa Rosa Hitchhiker Murders dot com website. And what they did on that website is so excellent. They arranged the articles in their archive, like in their database, based on uh, the theme and the person that it is relevant to. So they have all these articles on the murder of Kim Allen. It's arranged by the victim's name, and I think that that is very helpful. But uh, first, you know, we got to say some introductory things about Kim Allen as a murder victim before we start talking about any of the theories or any of the uh, pieces of evidence or possibilities or anything to do with things other than her life. So I'd like to read one of the articles they posted here. A memorial mass for Kim Wendy Allen was held yesterday at Ursuline High School's boarding residence where she lived until graduation in 1970. The event attended by students and friends was the only service requested by the girl's father, Kimball W. Allen of Mill Valley. Kim's nude body was found Sunday near a creek on Enterprise Road off of Bennett Valley Road. Authorities said the 19-year-old Santa Rosa Junior College student had been raped and murdered. Absolutely terrible, but I'm going to go on over to a different section in the article that's going to talk about the life of Kim Allen. While at Ursuline High School, Kim was a senior class spirit leader. She also served as big sister to Robin Wilkie, daughter of James Wilkie of Santa Rosa. Robin described Kim as the most unique person I've ever known. We spent a lot of time together during my freshman year, and it still bothered me near her graduation that she knew me so well, and I didn't exactly know how she thought about things. But her values were easily seen, and she took great interest in teaching me things that meant the most to her. She was a hard person to come close to, but her all-out enthusiasm for the things that she was interested in was something that I will always admire. She hadn't changed at all. I saw her um three weeks ago, and she acted the same way, only a little more interested and a little more distant, more enthusiastic, yet still distant. Anna Lee Shannon, Kim's sister, mentioned that only the week before she and Kim had talked about death and Kim had mentioned how joyful an event she wanted it to be, a beautiful ending to a beautiful life. Oh my gosh, you know, isn't that something? Prior to Saturday's liturgy at Ursuline High School, Sister Mary Xavier McPhee, Ursuline's principal, said, Kim was such a happy person, always. The Eucharistic celebration our girls are planning must have been joyful as its theme. This has been a very difficult day for all of us, but we are so grateful that the family came to us to arrange the memorial. Kim was born in Oakland. She is survived by her mother, Roberta Allen, and her brother, Robert Stevens. Egan and Lance Mortuary handled the funeral services and is in charge of the arrangements. And there you have it, and as you heard in the beginning about how Kim's body was found near a creek bed, found nude, and she was raped. That is just very, very saddening. And I would just, something that we could share from the victims that they could talk about this. But there are a few things that happened with the murder of Kim Allen. And this one stands out for a variety of reasons because Kim Allen was hitchhiking and she was going back and forth to a store that she worked. But the unusual thing about this one is, and you can see this on the screen now, that she was found carrying a barrel of soy sauce. I mean, this is the item that she was carrying. It was it's sometimes referred to as a soy barrel, 
but it had two particular characters on it, or maybe maybe three, depending on what you would want to say. And later on, in 1974, the Zodiac Killer would write an, a letter called the Exorcist Letter, which also had some odd markings on it. And what you can see here on the left-hand side are the markings from the Exorcist Letter, and on the right-hand side are the Chinese characters that are from Kim's uh, Soy Barrel. And I don't normally do this, but I would just like to read this little section of Wikipedia right here. Santa Rosa Junior College art student Kim Wendy Allen was given a ride home by two men on March 4th, 1972 from her job at Larkspur Natural Foods at, to San Rafael. The last time someone saw her approximately was 5.20 p.m. hitchhiking to the school near Bell Avenue entrance, Highway 101 northbound, carrying a large wooden soy barrel with red Chinese characters on it. Her body was found the following day on an embankment in a creek bed 20 feet off of Enterprise Road in Santa Rosa. Now, when you see that here, first and foremost, the biggest challenge question, do you think these things look the same? Do you think they look similar? Some people are like, the Zodiac Killer is taunting people and trying to show that he is claiming responsibility for this murder. Well, as we said, though, the Exorcist letter came out in 1974. This uh, murder was in 1972. So the time frame matches up. However, first and foremost, I would say, if you look at these characters, I would say that they actually look rather different upon closer inspection. If you look at the two lines on the very far left of each one, I think in Chinese that's called a radical. I mean, of course, that's the English name for it, but that's the radical, those two lines that point inward. And that is just used in many different Chinese characters. I also know several people in China, and I sent them this image here. And I was like, can you um, recognize anything about what this would be, particularly hoping that they would say something about the characters in the um, Exorcist letter? And every single person wrote back and said, I can't read this. I don't know what this is, people in China. And first and foremost, my instinct would tell me that the things that the Zodiac markings would indicate would be not Chinese. If they're anything, it would be Japanese because... In the Exorcist letter, that's the famous Titwillow, 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 that comes from the Mikado, which is, of course, an operetta by Gilbert and Sullivan, but it's all about Japanese things. And many people believe that there is a Japanese language connection to the Zodiac Killer mystery. Possibly the Zodiac Killer spent some time in Japan during World War II, possibly just being stationed in the post-World War II era. The Zodiac Killer murders occurred in 1968 and 69, the confirmed events, that is. And that is to say that it's possible that, very simply, the Zodiac Killer spent some time in the Pacific after World War II. And, and a lot of people would really um, have to think about this as well, that if their suspect in the Zodiac Killer mystery is somebody who is in their mid-20s, perhaps, these are crimes occurring in 1969, then they would have been born at the tail end of World War II. I mean, if you're going to be talking about mid-20s, 1945, if they're in their later 20s or early 30s, then they would have been born around World War II. But, of course, it's highly possible they could have been stationed there in the Pacific somewhere. And um, so what I would say, though, is just that I'm not convinced at all that these are the same characters. And let's also say one thing. Was the Zodiac responsible for the murder of Kim Wendy Allen? Well, the Zodiac didn't always hint at things so similarly as to leave symbols from a barrel on one of the letters that he had written. The Zodiac confessed to many different crimes, which I believe the Zodiac killer did not commit, such as perhaps the murder of Sherry Jo Bates, such as perhaps the incident with Kathleen Johns, the attempted abduction off of Highway Route 132 in California. So I don't really think the Zodiac would need to just drop little hints that he murdered someone. And the other thing that I would just like to say that points against Zodiac involvement in the murder of Kim Wendy Allen is Robert Graysmith might be trying to convince people that the Zodiac killer would also be capable of um, stripping people naked and dumping their bodies. But the Zodiac killer did not do that in the canonical crimes like Lake Herman Road, Blue Rock Springs, and uh, Lake Berryessa, that stuff didn't happen, even with the murder of Sherry Joe Bates and the attempted abduction of Kathleen Johns. 
those incidents, just those um, actions did not take place. Stripping the women naked and raping them, these, of, these actions did not take place in the Zodiac world. I mean, this is most likely a different perpetrator. But there's another suspect that comes up in this mystery. And we mentioned that Kim was an art student. And one of the other creative passions that she ended up doing was creative writing. And there was a creative writing teacher named Fred Manelli, M-A-N-A-L-L-I, Fred Manelli, which is short for Frederick Manelli. And he was somebody who got into a car accident and he died at the age of 41 in 1976. They actually have the, uh, da the date of his death here, August 24th, 1976. And I was on this, um, I was on this one podcast that I had never heard before. And they were talking about the Santa Rosa hitchhiker slangs. And what they said was, um, they believe that Fred Manelli was driving his van and then he just veered into oncoming traffic and was killed in a head on collision. What I think that podcast was trying to insinuate, and the uh, name has escaped me or else I would cite them as a reference, but I, what I believe they were insinuating was that this guy, Manelli, was mentally unstable. After he got into this auto crash and was killed in it, then drawings were found in the back because he was also somewhat of a creative type, and the, he had very detailed illustrations of bondage, of tying women up, and they even show some drawings that depict Kim Wendy Allen, the victim that we've uh, said all these things about. So, I mean, he, she was a student of his, and she is depicted in his illustrations. So a lot of people really turned, a lo put a lot of attention on Fred Manelli. But um, did he really have anything to do with it? He may have taken these secrets to the grave, however. I mean, first and foremost, what's my favorite line on this channel? Being weird is not a crime. Even if he had this bizarre fascination with drawing illustrations of people being tied up and such, that doesn't necessarily mean that he is 100% guilty. Does it lean that way? Yes, absolutely. And that isn't even so much a red flag. That's just something that people would really have to accept, that if somebody is having those types of drawings in their car, then I think that they would just have to um, accept that there's a very high likelihood that somebody could have involvement with that. But I would like to go back to a point that we mentioned in part one. And once again, that is available in the description box here. If you would like to hear more about the Santa Rosa hitchhiker slangs and you haven't heard our introductory piece, these things aren't going to be numbered because, I mean, people can just listen to them and talk about the individual victims and such. But the thing that we should say is that there's an individual named Arthur Lee Allen who becomes a suspect in this. He was the prime suspect in the Zodiac Killer mystery before being exonerated by DNA and fingerprint and side palm print testing, although the DNA evidence is somewhat questionable with Arthur Lee Allen. But at the point that I wanted to go back to was one that was mentioned by the YouTuber Brianne Clark when she said that Arthur Lee Allen was accused of molesting small children. Kim Wendy Allen was 19 at the time of her murder, and She's just saying that if you look at all of the Santa Rosa hitchhiker slaves, you're dealing with people who are much older than small children. Even if you're going to be dealing with 12 year olds and as well as a 19 year old, such as Kim Wendy Allen, those types of things just are not. Where is the evidence that this was a pedophile? Because we even have an allegation against Arthur Lee Allen that he molested a three year old girl who was the daughter of Don Cheney. But as some things came out on Drew Beeson's channel, I mean, that's the first place where I heard him discussing this. And even Tom Voigt has discussed this as well. There are possible, possible possibilities that, this, that those incidents are misrepresented, I guess we should say. However, the point is, Arthur Lee Allen was a convicted sex offender targeting very young children. Those types of uh, pieces of information just are not present in the Santa Rosa hitchhiker slangs. That doesn't mean that Arthur Lee Allen was a good person. and He was a horrible, despicable person, but perhaps he wasn't guilty of these particular murders, yet he is still one of the more discussed suspects. Now, because um, we have this archive of articles on Kim Wendy Allen, I would like to jump over to one here called Female Hitchhikers and the Pain of Kim's Mother. And once again, these are available at Santa Rosa Hitchhiker Murders dot com. And they have, um, once again, it really is nice that they arrange this stuff all according to each victim. Hundreds of people, many of them young girls, hitchhike daily in Sonoma County. The sight of a young girl hitchhiking has become a personal curse for Mrs. Roberta Allen of Oakland, 
mother of Kim Wendy Allen, whose nude body was found off of Enterprise Road, March 5th, in an isolated area in southeast Santa Rosa. She was raped and strangled. Also, the Zodiac Killer did not rape and strangle the victims. Sheriff's Lieutenant Charles Kishbaugh, K-I-S-H-B-A-U-G-H, I I guess it's Kishbaugh, said yesterday that the investigation into Kim's death had become a matter of routine running down every case that comes up with the similarities. If the suspect may tie into the case here, it may turn out to be a lifelong process, and that really has proven to be true. It may have turned out to be a lifelong process, he admitted, adding that Detective Sergeant Timothy Brown had checked out numerous similar cases being assigned to find Kim's killer more than a month ago. For Mrs. Allen, the sight of young girls seeking rides has become a lifelong reminder of her own loss. And, you know, that she really is going to feel something, but, like, this is something that just cannot necessarily go away hitchhiking. Even when we were talking about the Manson family and Dennis Wilson, we did our upload the death of Dennis Wilson. That is how he got involved with the Manson family, because he picked up two individuals uh, from that group who were hitchhiking along the side of the road. And we talked about how there is a certain romanticization about hitchhiking because of people like Jack Kerouac. But also, it was just an effective way for some people to get to and from because people were not intimidated by people like Kim Wendy Allen. They wouldn't mind picking her up and then moving her along wherever she wanted to go because they would not have been threatened by her. However, it turned out that it turned out to be somewhat of a dangerous situation. In an interview with the Oakland Tribune yesterday, she said, I was feeling pretty good. People tell me I'll start getting over it until I was on my way to work, and I got on to Broadway and MacArthur in Oakland. I saw a girl, she must have been about 15, and she was hitchhiking. I got to thinking about it. By the time I got to work, I broke down, Mrs. Allen said. I mean, you heard some of the victims' ages. We said that the youngest victims were 12, but also a 14-year-old runaway is another victim in the Santa Rosa hitchhiker slayings. So you can see that... um Very young people were hitchhiking, accepting rides from people that they did not know. But when we look at the um, connections to the Zodiac Killer in this case, I do not see a whole lot here. Unless you're going to... No, I just really don't. I mean, I was about to say, unless you're going to theorize and speculate in one of the wider directions... That is, an, that is going to incorporate a few other things like the group murder theory or something like that, that multiple people committed the Zodiac Killer murders and that one of them may have also been doing things like the Santa Rosa hitchhiker slayings. But where is the proof of that? Where is the hard definitive evidence to say any of that happened? And we mentioned how Ted Bundy was mostly exonerated because his um, credit cards were being used in Washington state at the time in which some of these events were happening. They simply do not believe that Ted Bundy was committing these murders. And another point is when we have at least eight people who are killed during the Santa Rosa hitchhiker slayings, then how do they know that all of these were committed by the same person? It definitely feels like there was a serial killer who was on the loose And some of these show a very similar operation when the victims are found hogtied, even just being found naked and with the bodies dumped. Sometimes they were carried a substantial distance. I can see that they show certain similarities or it looks like somebody's M.O. It looks like somebody's signature. They could recognize that, okay, this one person committed these murders and it's most likely that this person committed the other murders. But um. I cannot recommend it enough for you guys to go to Santa Rosa Hitchhiker Murders dot com, all written as one thing there. We should also say, though, that one of the victims in this case was a Jane Doe. And what I also heard on the podcast that I was listening to from the person whose channel that I will not be able to remember, if I can remember her name, I will give her a shout out in the future. She said that um, originally they, they thought this Jane Doe was Jeanette Kamahele, one of the victims that we mentioned yesterday on the channel. But with Jeanette, they never found her remains. So that's one of the reasons why they originally thought this Jane Doe was uh, Jeanette Kamahele. But in reality, um, it just appears that they are different people and a different uh, murder took place. So the last thing we can do is just read off uh, Kim, Kim Wendy Allen's biography. She was born on the 7th, or she was born on the 22nd of July, the 7th month, 722. 
She was born on the 22nd of July, 1956, and she went missing on March 4th, 1972. She was last seen hitchhiking from her job in Larkspur, and she was trying to get to her home in Santa Rosa, California. Her body was found on March 5th. You hear that? She went missing on March 4th, and um, I, I mean, I heard this somewhere. They thought they said that it was rather abnormal because with most of the victims, it took a while. One of them, like even we said yesterday, was confound just pure skeletal remains with Kim Wendy Allen. She was found the day after she disappeared. The body was found on March 5th. She went missing on March 4th, and her body was found on March 5th, 1972. The location of the body was found on an embankment on the north side of Enterprise Road, eight-tenths of a mile from the intersection with Bennett Valley Road. So this does seem to be something that is very consistent in the Santa Rosa hitchhiker slangs. The victims are moved a substantial distance from the road, and that's why we said that it's perhaps they're looking for someone who is above average in size or definitely not a smaller perpetrator because they would be carrying these bodies. There, aren't, there definitely aren't any tire tracks or anything leading up to this, making it look like a dump site. It, they believe they were carried. And the cause of death was strangulation with rope wire or a similar material. And it does say rope wire with a hyphen in it. But um, there was a gold earring that was found at the scene with a loop in it. And the victim also ha had been bound at her wrists and her ankles. So there were some things there. And, you know, what we can say is rest in peace to Kim Wendy Allen. Horrific crime. And if you look at how it affects the victims, it is absolutely tragic. I mean, when you hear some of their impact statements. But what do you have to say about anything that we've mentioned so far? And furthermore, what is your stance on what is your stance on the images about the Zodiac Killer's Exorcist letter stuff versus what was written in Chinese on the soy barrel, the barrel of soy sauce? I mean, as far as I understand it, that was indeed a barrel of soy sauce that she was carrying. Sometimes it's referred to as the soy barrel. I did look up the word for uh, soy sauce in Chinese, but it wasn't um, it wasn't what anything that looked like what was written on the barrel. So I, I, I just thought that it simply would have said soy sauce. And I can't, um, my Chinese is not as good as it should be. But yeah, the characters uh, for um, soy sauce in Chinese, Jiang Yo, they do not really appear to uh, resemble this. It's possible, but um, no, no. It um, Either that or maybe some of them have been worn off in some way. It looks, well, it looks different to me. All right, please drop anything you have to say in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this upload, you can hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, you're welcome to do so. And I will see you guys on Instagram for the bonus podcast, BlackBoxNid88. Until next time.